What was your initial? Give me an initial big picture sweeping reaction to round one. Well, I, that's where I wanted to have fun with you. I, I just, I, I don't know. I found that to be the most exciting, eventful first round like ever. I, I did. I, I just, I really thought it was amazing to kind of see, you know, how people's boards fell, all the trades, you know, how some teams valued players maybe more than others, right? Where we talked about before the draft, like, hey, I think there's two or three guys at every position that separate themselves from the rest. And a lot of teams had a top two or three different guys. I think that jumped out. So between that, the wide receivers, Mike, are still a huge commodity in the NFL. An O-line run, one quarterback. I mean, even even for you, I thought about you a few times last night. Like, that had to be a damn fun draft to watch. Uh, I, I just thought it was as exciting as, as I can remember. Well, it, it was strange because through the first 10 picks, nothing unexpected happened. There were no trades during draft night. Obviously, there were trades that set the table for the top 10 and all 32 before we even got started. But once we got started, the top 10 picks all went as scheduled, well, not even the Seahawks yeah. at number nine, who loved to trade down, made a move. Nothing happened. And the moment that I realized, hey, we've gone through 10 picks and there hasn't been a trade, it became trade city. It was one trade Amazing. after another. And and uh, uh, dogs and cats living together in the NFC North, the Vikings and the Lions, shades of the Javid Best trade. The Vikings and the Lions did that deal 2010. Best actually looked like he was going to be a great running back until concussion shortened his career, but you always got to be a little nervous about helping someone from your division get what they want. The Lions surprising everyone going back to the days of Matt Millen and drafting a first-round receiver, but it, it was receiver ultimately in, in multiple ways. Yeah. The run on receivers right. and the running of receivers out of town yeah. in two places that we didn't expect last night. We were all watching... For a Debo Samuel trade, no Debo Samuel trade happens. The biggest lightning bolt of the night was the A.J. Brown trade from the Tennessee Titans to the Philadelphia Eagles. And before we focus on the Eagles side of it, the Titans have adopted this theory that was articulated by Scott McLuhan, former 49ers and Washington GM, that you just don't pay big money to receivers. Look at what the Titans have done. They struck gold with A.J. Brown in the second round in 2019. Yeah. After three seasons with him, 19, 20, 21, instead of paying him, they dumped him. And with the first round pick they got for him, they drafted his replacement. And that's all well and good. And I thought it was funny. Daniel Jeremiah on NFL Network started laughing. And saying, you know, my main comparable for Traylon Burks is A.J. Brown. Yeah, right. But that doesn't mean that Burks is going to become Brown. You already oh. had, you already had the guy who proved to you what he can do. These receivers taken last night, they're all not going to become AJ Brown. Yeah, there's going I to know. be an Akil Harry floating around in there. There's going to be a Jalen Rieger floating around in there, and it's a hell of a risk by the Titans from a philosophical standpoint. It and is. I, and there's a clip of Mike Vrabel kind of yeah. getting up and looking pissed off, and he had said. A.J. Brown's going to be here as long as I'm the coach. Twice he said that, and he's not Twice. a guy to BS. Right, right. So yes. uh, I just I think the boss didn't want to pay A.J. Brown, and John Robinson Here's won that video, little mini Mike. tug of war. There he is. J John Robinson won that tug of war. Yeah, just I mean, this is I mean, this is one where, yeah, he's not he's he's mad. Well, one, like you said, he's a man of his word. There's no doubt about that. And and then he said it twice in the last week about A.J. Brown as long as I'm the head coach. And he probably I, – I, I would bet Tennessee didn't go into the draft thinking that would happen. Um, but John Robinson from New England, that type of guy, it presents itself. He makes the move. And Vrabel, yeah, probably is like, oh, man, I mean, gosh, uh, we're really going to let go of that guy? And, yeah, I, I can imagine him shaking his head and pissing and moaning a little bit there, you know, at, the, at, at, at that first pick of the draft. But, Mike, it's, I think, really interesting and, I don't know, maybe a little bit of a look into the future of the NFL of, you know, we've talked about this. You know, you, you want teams to trade for receivers. you got to have the teams that want them and the teams that are going to go, we don't want them. And here's one of those That's teams right. that I think John Robinson is going to be like, you know what, I'm going to try to go through my scouting and be tactical, and I'm not going to pay $28, 30000000 million a year from a receiver because they're growing on trees right now like we've seen. 
Now the now the beauty and the hard part is like you said, you got to pick the right one because it is a risk. AJ Brown's special, and there's no guarantee Burks is going to be special like that yet. That, that's for sure. The uh, the situation really is fascinating. Mike Vrabel, as we mentioned, did say that AJ Brown will be there as long as he's the head coach. John Robinson said last night that it was going to be difficult to get a deal done with AJ Brown. They had reached the impasse. They weren't right. going to be able to bridge the gap. It's a four-year, $100 million extension that Brown signs as part of this trade to Philadelphia. And I think they did go into the night knowing it was a real possibility, Chris. They had to. Those pieces don't fall together the yeah, way they right, did. Mike. You're right. You're if right. If you don't know, it's That's possible because yeah. not only are you doing the deal with the Titans, you're negotiating with A.J. Brown's representatives. So I would suspect at some point A.J. Brown's representatives got permission to speak to the Eagles about that contract. It doesn't get done that quickly. Only at the start of free agency does a $100 million contract get negotiated so quickly. They had to have had an advance opportunity to try to do with the Eagles what they weren't able to do with the Titans. And this makes it kind of a Tyree Kill situation because for the second time now, in a little over a month, there was quietly and discreetly an effort to trade a big-name receiver that no one knew about. So kudos to all involved. As Debo Samuel was providing the distraction, A.J. Brown and Tory Dandy represents both Samuel and Brown. Dandy was getting the deal done for A.J. Brown while everyone was focused on Debo Samuel. So kind of weird to see that juxtaposition where Brown was able to just get his business taken care of. And he had a tweet last night that he deleted. A.J. Brown said, basically, hey, everybody in Tennessee, I love you all. You're going to be in my heart forever, but this was not my fault. All caps, this was not my fault. He deleted it, but this was not my fault. And I, I agree with him. It wasn't his fault because he's just trying to get paid and the Titans right. didn't want to pay him. 100%. It's not his fault. It's nobody's fault. It's a philosophical difference. That's what it came down to. Philosophical decision made by the Titans, by Brown, and by the Eagles. Yeah. The Eagles are willing to pay him the money and give up the draft picks to get him. The Titans have him, and they're not willing to pay him the money. That's, what's, that's what is so fascinating about these worlds that are colliding in the NFL. Yes. F them picks and pluck them picks. We'll gladly give up the proven commodity to get more lottery tickets. We'll gladly give up the lottery tickets to get the proven commodity and pay him. Without those two sides, it doesn't happen. No, it doesn't happen. I think it is. It's going to be cool to see. I mean, we saw a little bit of like what what the look is there last night. That hey, these top ones, let's get them, get them on the team. They can contribute right away early in their NFL career. We've seen that they're ready to go in NFL ready the way wide receivers come in. And Mike, it might be one of those things that I thought about you a little last night, where it might be the new formula you've just. Described it with running backs where teams don't want to, you know, maybe draft running backs and then, okay, they, they're they good and then you have to pay him because you, oh, I mean, look what he's done for us for three years. You got to pay him. You know, the receiver thing I feel like might be the same way where some of these teams are not quite the same but going, hey, we're at year three. I, I mean – uh, he, you know, AJ Brown, another year, or and we know he wanted a contract. Maybe Hollywood Brown's the better conversation here with this, where well, he's going to have another year and he gets a thousand yards. He's going to want one of these huge contracts too. So like the Ravens, I think are getting ahead of the curve and going, we're not going to deal with that right for next year. We're not going to deal with it or be, you know, put in a corner by our fan base to go. How could you let go one of your own, a homegrown first round pick? He's had thousand yard years two after year, two years after each other. I think you're seeing that too, where teams are going like trying to find the sweet spot to get out underneath these contracts or the looming contract on the horizon and just take again a younger commodity. And uh, it, it's going to be cool to see here with, with this position. We'll talk about the Ravens yeah. in a couple of minutes yeah, because they didn't backload with the receiver. The Titans did. That's what makes the Titans so fascinating. Yeah, right. Out with the guy who wants $100 right. million, in with a new guy, and hey, if he really works out, he's going to want a lot of money, and then in three years we're going to have to trade him. The only difference is they can maybe kick the can one more year because of the fifth-year option. Yes, right. Maybe they can keep Burks four years before they're trading him to someone and backfilling again. I just don't like – we've talked about this. I don't like the idea that you get a great player and you get rid of him before you get the most out of him. 
one of the realities of hitting on one of these draft picks is at some point you're going to have to pay him as he's smack dab in the middle of his prime. That's what you're going to have to do. That's what you want to do. That's the good problem to have. Hey, we did a hell of a job in round two in 2019 with A.J. Brown. Oh, now we got to pay him. Well, that that goes with the territory. You do a hell of a job with somebody. You develop him. You draft the right guy. He becomes a great player. You've got to pay him. And for Traylon Burks on the way in the door, the message is, hey, but I better not be too good or they're going to trade me on draft night in a few years. And that's one of these sends a bad message to the locker room moves. I think that's why Mike Vrabel got up and paced a little bit. How? What am I going to say to my guys? What am I going to say? What am I going to say to my guys that we wouldn't pay the receiver we had, so we went out and got some someone who's completely unproven? completely and totally unproven who's going to take his place. And it all happened on the same night. Uh, that, that's a tough one to sell to a locker room of guys who think there's a very clear connection between doing well and doing well financially. Doing well professionally, doing well financially. And now there's a wall there that the Titans have erected as it relates to A.J. Brown. And the other guys in the locker room are going to be looking at it saying, is that what happens to me? Is that my reward? Yeah. If I do really well, yeah. you trade me to another team that's willing to pay me what you want. Right. No, I, I mean, Mike, you're I mean, you're right. I mean, there's definitely going to have some guys looking out of the corner of their eye a little bit. They understand the business. Vrabel will say the right things, too, about how much he loved A.J. Brown. And, hey, listen, it's cutthroat like we know. And, you know, every team's always trying to crack the code or find the new way to build a team that's the – you know, we can get over on the rest of the NFL. And I feel like, you know, Tennessee here, they're going, wait, we, we've got two big-time pass rushers. We paid a ton of money. You know, we're paying a running back pretty good money. They're paying Tannehill good money. You know, Jeffrey Simmons is on the horizon, who that's, to me, we're probably part of this issue, too. Their defensive tackle, who's going to be asking for a new big new contract here, where they're going, wait, we're not going to be able to pay all these guys. So, A.J., and I think John Robinson's just showing us, Mike, just yeah, it's something we talked about. He's going, all right, you know, th this is going to be my new formula. I'm not going to waste the money on these guys. I think you can get these guys in the league. And if you've got a pretty good offensive coordinator, he's going to find ways to get the ball in the hands of these guys. And it's going to go from there. And I, I, I listen, I, I'm, I'm going to be interested to see where it goes because I think there is logic. I mean, you know, again, Mike, I think we could have the conversation like here's a little bit where there, there's 20 top 10 receivers in football. I, I really think you could go like that. You know, we've, we've had this a little bit where if you ask 10 different coaches, their top 10 receivers are kind of be all over the place. And I think some teams are just going, well, all right, there's these guys coming in the league and we'll kind of just we just want one of those 20 and we feel like we can go and still be good. The difference between what's happening with running backs and receivers, there are similarities. Yeah. The attitude is there's plenty of great ones entering every year, right. so some teams are going to say we don't need to pay the ones we have. Right. But the difference is there wasn't a single running back taken in the first round last night. There no. was a run on receivers last night in the first round. It's a passing and the two league. big names traded yeah. are receivers. It's receivers, receivers, receivers. So not only are they plentiful, they are falling all over each other to go get them, to get the best of them in round one. Right. And other teams are opening the wallet as widely as they can to go trade for established talent. It really is a fascinating time. And it I've is. never seen this dynamic at any other position where – Teams will do whatever they have to do to go draft the unproven commodity. And you've got multiple teams. Now. We've now seen four teams do it. The Raiders, the Dolphins, the Eagles, and the Cardinals. Go out and get a proven receiver and give up real trade assets and pay that guy as part of it. Pay the guy that the current team wasn't willing to pay. That is an amazing development in a quarterback-driven league. Yeah. Now it's becoming... Not quite 1A and 1B, but you you really can make the case that receiver is slipping past edge rusher as the number two most important position on the field. The proof is in what teams are doing to go get them. Right. Or the proof is in what teams are doing with the ones that have gotten them and what it means to their success on the field. I mean, we saw last year, Jamar Chase – 
halfway through year one, we were going, he's one of the five best receivers in football. So teams are Justin Jefferson the year before that, halfway through the year, we're going, he's one of the 10 best receivers in football. Rookie, ready to go. Uh, so, and then Devontae Smith last year, and we've had a ton of this where I think the league has got to, wait, these guys can come in in the first year, second year, and be in the top 10 conversation at this position right away. And then, like we talk about, you have the offensive coordinator. And, you know, I think teams with the passing league this day and age in the NFL, 2022, you know, I think a lot of them, too, are looking at it and go, you, know, you don't need one good one. You actually need two if you want to really put pressure on a football team with the way the NFL is being played right now. And I think that's the other aspect of it as well, where, you, you know, a lot of the good teams got two of these really damn good ones on their team. And that puts a lot of pressure on a defense and changes the game in, in a lot of ways. As we've said many times in this new crazy world of the NFL where there are teams that are happy to give up picks and pay a player, there are teams that are happy to take those picks and not pay the player even though he's been their employee. Let's hear from the two general managers who were involved in getting this deal done between the Eagles and the Titans to send A.J. Brown to Philly. Howie Roseman of the Eagles and John Robinson of the Titans. The, the trade was contingent on us getting an extension, um, so it was something we were working on during the course of the draft, and um, we were just kind of trying to balance um, finishing that, and if we didn't finish that, making sure we also got the right players. Um, but it didn't matter the receivers on the board, you know, for us. Um, A.J. Brown wa was somebody that um, we had studied coming out and uh, spent a lot of time on, and we had a lot of love for A.J. Brown in that draft. Um, Obviously, you know, things went a different way in that draft, but I'm really excited to get him um, just in terms of uh, how coach can use him and his vision for A.J. Brown in this offense and uh, how he complements the other guys that we have here. And um, as you guys may or may not know, his relationship with our quarterback, um, you know, all, all exciting things. And I'm looking forward to getting him into Philadelphia. The decision we made today um, was, a, it was a tough one. Um, you know, really appreciate what AJ has done here for our football team on the field, uh, in the community. Um, and we had discussions back and forth. And I really realized we got to a spot where it's going to be hard to kind of get a deal done. Um, and the trade thing kind of manifested itself from them. And did John Robinson talk like a Tennessee guy when he was working for the Patriots? Is yes. that something he's acquired? No, no, he's okay. from Tennessee, just so you know. Right. His well, is why it's it's just, he's made for hey. them down there. This is a dream job for him, and, hey, you know, I think he's doing a hell of a job. That was a tough decision. He's a little out of breath it there. Really, <laughs> it really is. Yeah, you know why? Because he's he just nervous. had his ass kicked by Mike Vrabel. <laughs> he's worried He's worried sitting there next to Mike Vrabel that that big, beefy left hand like is I just going to go right <laughs> yeah. over. Yes, yes. <laughs> right. Um, former NFL player and not former NFL player, when you get two of them close together and push comes to shove, there will be pushing and there will be shoving and there will be usage of that giant meat hook, especially when you make one of the guys upset. And I'm telling you, I don't care. Vrabel can't be happy about this because Vrabel's not the guy to BS. When Vrabel says That's A.J. Right. Brown is going to be here as long as I'm the coach, he's not participating in a smokescreen. He doesn't do that. That is in so his either. way. Right. He wanted A.J. Brown there, and he lost it. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and say it. I've, I've hinted at it before. I don't know this, but I don't think he wanted Julio Jones last year, and that wasn't his call. And I bet that makes him even more pissed off. It's like, wait, you guys don't way. want to pay Brown. Yeah. You, you, you were willing to bring in the guy that I said, we don't need him. We don't want him. It's not going to make us any better. And you know what Julio Jones did for the Titans? He made them no better last year. That was a disaster. That yeah. was a mistake. It was. And they didn't listen to him then. And now they're not listening to him <clears throat> now. And I bet he is pissed. And you got to wonder, and I'm not advocating this. I don't condone this. But you got to wonder... If Mike Vrabel's thinking, if I am going to stay here, I got to be, I got to be better attuned to this organization. And again, I don't know how much John Robinson is doing the bidding of ownership, but if they're just too cheap to pay AJ Brown, let's remind everyone they're getting a new stadium down there, and it's going to be somewhere between 1.2 to 1.5 billion in public money that is used to build that stadium. They are getting free money. They are making a ton of money. So let's not go cheap when we have a great player that is going to be a cornerstone of the Eagles' success moving forward now. That, that's the, the, the biggest 
head scratcher about this new dynamic. You have a team that says, we know the guy, we love the guy, we just aren't going to pay him. And you have another team that says, we don't know the guy, but we think we're really going to love him enough to pay him more than what his current team will pay him. To me, the fact that we're finding those matches in multiple cities between multiple teams for multiple players, that's amazing to me. Yeah, no, it is amazing. And I think, you know, I think it's, it's the dynamic of the GMs, too. It's a little of the psychology there as well. You know, you, may, you know, you gotta, you're gonna have your guys like John Robinson who are gonna go. I'm, I'm confident in my ability to find guys at this position, and then you're gonna have guys like Howie Roseman who's gonna go. Yeah, I'm, you know, I, I feel like I can find him too, but uh, this guy here, just I know he's good, so I'm just gonna just go with that and pay the money and pay the premium for it. So that's where it is fun. You know, I'm with you in the fact that Bra- Vrabel. I, I, I would think, you know, one. You know, didn't want it to happen. You know, maybe he wasn't quite aware that it was, you know, that far down the road as far as trade talks with Howie. Or maybe really what I really thought, Mike, was maybe he knew this was on the radar a little bit, and he's been saying this for the last week, to maybe put public pressure on John Robinson and the Titans because he didn't want to do it. So I don't know, either way. But Robinson's really smart. I worked with him a little up in New England, and this is going to be his – patriot way a little bit he's gonna be tactical and and be smart and economical on the wide receiver position it looks like he doesn't want to do this well, and uh yeah we'll see we're how see. smart we'll see how smart it You're is right. we're gonna see. Parks. i know that's the guy they re- acquired from arkansas and there's more pressure on him now that's the other thing that we need to take into account we don't get to have that conversation with the chiefs and the packers because they didn't use one of their first round picks on receivers because all the best ones were gone by the time they were in position Did aaron Rodgers have hair tra- left today you think you think he's got any hair tra- left on his head <laughs> a lot of tequila a lot of tequila <laughs> <laughs> Mahomes has receivers. Rodgers is probably shape. going crazy. Yeah. <laughs> um, but Traylon Burks, extra pressure on him to yeah. walk through the door and replace A.J. Brown. And and not all these guys that were drafted last night are going to become Justin Jefferson, A.J. Brown, D.K. Metcalf, Debo right. Samuel. There's a Jalen Rieger floating around in there. That's right. There's... There, there's a Nikhil Harry floating around in there. So uh, that, that's, that's just the law of averages, and it's one of the realities of the draft. When you have a run like that, you're going to have some guys that are – and, I, hey, there was a, a mini run. It's now been six years ago when it was Will Fuller and Josh Doxson and, and uh, yeah. the one that went to the Vikings whose name that I, I used to know, but oh. maybe I've expunged it from my memory. Laquan, Laquan Treadwell. Treadwell. Right, right. And they and they all they all none of them they were good. all hey listen I think I mean, this group's a hair overrated a bunch, but I think it's yeah. a hair overrated this group we'll see I I did not think we were going to be seeing you know all this in the top twenty I did not I didn't think these guys were as talented as some of the guys we've seen in years past but you know definitely one of the shocks of the draft I mean again there's you know I mean Drake London at eight and then all of a sudden it just set the world off and then it was Ohio State guy Ohio State guy and then pissed off ex-Ohio State guy going, I'm pissed that those guys went in front of me and Detroit trading up 20 picks to get Jamison Williams, which is a huge move. Detroit, one of the teams that won the draft, in my opinion, right there. I mean, to make that move. Uh, but yeah, Mike, I, I'm like you. I was in shock. I just couldn't believe the the race to get the receivers that these teams looked at that were go, these six right here, they felt like we're in a class of their own. And they, there was a premium on them, premium on them by some teams. And you saw they went up and got them or took them early and weren't going to let it hang around and, and go to chance. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.